Hey, what is up, Flame City family? It's Bobby, and today we are gonna hook you up with the ultimate Thanksgiving table because over the years, we've had so many Thanksgiving and holiday recipes. So we thought we'd make a compilation showing you a turkey and five side dishes that I know you're gonna love and your family is gonna love this holiday season. The ultimate brined turkey. Then we're gonna move on to a homemade cranberry sauce. Then my skillet cornbread recipe then roasted squash and Brussels sprouts with a hot bacon dressing, the ultimate creamy mashed potatoes, and creamy roasted butternut squash soup. So let's get started with the granddaddy of them all, the dry brine citrus butter turkey for Thanksgiving. If you're wondering whether to brine or not to brine, do it. It adds a ton of flavor. The thing about a wet brine, it's kind of cumbersome. I mean, finding room in your fridge for a 15 pound turkey, sitting in a vat of brown sugar, salty water, it just doesn't work in a small condo here in Chicago. But my dry brine citrus turkey is way easier and does everything the wet one does, and here's how you do it. Go ahead and chop up some fresh sage, along with rosemary and thyme. Add that to a bowl with a quarter cup of light brown sugar, and then go in with a half a cup of kosher salt. Crack in some pepper, and then add the zest of two lemons. Rub the dry brine all over the turkey, and then stash it in the fridge overnight. The next day, rinse it in the sink to get all of that brine off. Pat the turkey dry, and then season the cavity with a big pinch of salt, and then go in with apples, onions, celery, and a cinnamon stick. Make my citrus herb butter, and then peel the skin back from the turkey breast and stuff that butter underneath the skin directly on the breast. Drizzle the bird with a good shot of oil, and then a liberal pinch of salt, and then line a roasting pan with a bunch of vegetables and put the turkey directly on that. Go ahead and put a probe thermometer in the dark meat in the leg, and then roast it in a 350 degree oven for two to two and a half hours or until the internal temperature hits 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure you let the turkey rest a good hour after it's done, otherwise the juices will spill everywhere if you try to cut it open too soon. Now, if for some reason you don't have a big family like Dusty and I, you can use my ultimate roasted turkey breast recipe we released the other day. It kind of uses the same technique. It serves two or three people and it's really, really easy to make. I'll put that link down below in the description box. All right, for holiday recipe number two, we're doing my homemade cranberry sauce. Listen, my mom used to love this stuff out of the can, but for me, the homemade cranberry dipping sauce is so delicious and ridiculously easy to make. Let's do it. Add a quarter cup each of pure cranberry juice and fresh orange juice to a small pot, along with one cup of honey. Bring that to a simmer and then add one pound of fresh cranberries. Simmer that mixture for 15 minutes until the cranberries have burst and it's nice and thick and syrupy. You could either serve it like that, or if you wanna go all out, take an empty clean can, fill it up to the rim, refrigerate it overnight, then take the can off and you have homemade canned cranberry sauce. Next up, no Thanksgiving table is complete without a cast iron skillet cornbread. There's something really cool about putting that pan in the oven and then serving it on the table. And the really cool thing about this recipe is that it can be made gluten-free and dairy-free or standard. I'm gonna give you options for both. Either way, it is so darn tasty. Here's how you make it. Add one and one third cup of medium grind cornmeal to a bowl, and then go in with three quarters of a cup of gluten-free all-purpose flour mix and three tablespoons of sugar. Add two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and a healthy pinch of salt. Give it a mix up and move it aside. Add one and one third cups of unsweetened almond milk or cow's milk to a bowl, along with the juice of one lemon to make it sour like buttermilk. Go in with seven tablespoons of melted coconut oil or butter, then crack two eggs into the mixture. Give it a really good whisk up and then pour the wet batter on top of the dry, and then use a spatula to mix everything very well. Next, go in with one cup of frozen corn kernels and one four ounce can of Mexican green chilies that are drained. Give it one more good mix and then grab your cast iron pan from the preheating oven. Pour one tablespoon of coconut oil and melt it all around. And then add your batter to the pan and smooth it out to one even layer. Chuck that baby back into the oven and bake it for about 30 to 35 minutes. It's so moist, so light and creamy. You guys have to make this so next up, I came up with this funky little side dish last year for roasted squash and Brussels sprouts tossed in a warm bacon fat dressing with maple syrup and walnuts. And oh my gosh, it was unbelievable. It's sure to be an ultimate favorite side dish for your family. Here's how you do it. Carefully have a couple of delicata squash, 
scoop the seeds out using a spoon, and then cut them into quarter inch thick half moons. Cut a pound and a half of Brussels sprouts in half, and then add them to a bowl. Season the squash and the sprouts with a good shot of oil, a generous pinch of salt, and a few cracks of black pepper. Spill those guys out onto a hot baking sheet and bake in the oven separately for about 25 to 30 minutes. For the crispy bacon vinaigrette, cook a half a pound of bacon until most of the fat has been rendered out and the bacon is nice and crispy. Then add some fresh red onions that are finely chopped, a couple tablespoons of walnuts that are chopped, a few cloves of garlic that are finely minced, and cook that for a couple minutes. To round out the vinaigrette, go in with red wine vinegar, some maple syrup for sweetness, and one teaspoon of whole grain mustard. Grab those roasted and toasted veggies from the oven and add them to a clean bowl, along with some freshly chopped parsley, and then pour that warm bacon fat vinaigrette all over the vegetables and toss it well to combine, and it's even better when everything is hot. By the way, all of these recipes are on flavcity.com as usual. And of course, I'll put the links down below in the description box. Now, next up, you know we're not gonna forget about mashed potatoes. I basically have the recipe for the lightest, creamiest mashed potatoes ever. It's really simple, but there's two techniques you need to use for the ultimate mashed potatoes, and here it is. Add three pounds of peeled russet potatoes to a pot of cold water, and then add a good amount of salt. Pop that on the heat and let it cook for 40 minutes. Then add half a cup of heavy cream and half a cup of whole milk to a pot and grab some fresh sage, rosemary, and thyme. Add that to the pot, along with a pinch of salt, some black peppercorns, and four cloves of garlic that are peeled. After 40 minutes, the potatoes should be soft but not falling apart. Drain them very well. Add a stick of butter to a bowl and then use a potato ricer. I'm telling you guys, this is the only way to get soft, fluffy potatoes. It just extrudes the potatoes out in this soft, light texture. So pass all the potatoes through that, directly onto the stick of butter, of course, and then fold everything really nicely so the butter can coat the potatoes. And then add the hot cream and milk mixture. Mix everything until it's well combined. And look at that texture, right? Light and creamy and silky. Go ahead and plate it up into a serving bowl. And then, heck, it is Thanksgiving, so put a big old knob of butter on top. And there it is, ultimate creamy light mashed potatoes. Now, if you're on the keto diet and you're looking for low-carb cauliflower mash, you know your boy's gonna hook you up. I'll put that recipe down below. You basically boil cauliflower with some garlic, whip it up with some cheese. I'm telling you, it's this close to the real deal, and it's keto low-carb approved. All right, last but not least, we're gonna make my roasted butternut squash soup. I call it a hug in a mug because it's so autumnal and so comforting, and this is how you do it. Safely cut one butternut squash in half, and then peel away the skin. And then I like to tap a knife through it using a rolling pin so I don't cut my fingers. Scoop out all the seeds and then chop it into large cubes. Place the squash on a sheet tray and drizzle with a good shot of olive oil about a teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. Mix it up and toss it in the oven for about 45 minutes until golden brown. Next up, drizzle a shot of oil into a soup pot and then go in with some onions, carrots, and celery, followed by a good pinch of salt, a few cracks of black pepper, and give that a good mix. Cook that for about seven minutes, then add a few cloves of garlic that are finely minced, a little bit of red pepper flakes for heat, Roll up five sage leaves, finely slice them, and then add it to the pot, along with a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. That'll cut through the richness of the squash. And then take a look at that butternut squash. That's why we roast it first. That nutty caramelized flavor is gonna add loads of flavor to the soup. Add the squash to the soup pot. And then add a tablespoon and a half of maple syrup to drive home those fall flavors. And then go in with two quarts of chicken stock or beef stock. Simmer the soup for a good 35 minutes, and then break out your stick blender and blend until smooth and creamy. Pour yourself a bowl and enjoy some of the best soup of your life. And there it is, you guys. Five holiday side dishes and the ultimate dry brine citrus turkey. These are some of my best ever favorite Thanksgiving and holiday recipes that I wanna share with you. And I want you to tag me on social media when you make it because I know you and your family are gonna love it. 
All of the recipes are down below in the description box. The macros, the reheating, the storage, all that good stuff is on flavecity.com. If you want to see two of those videos I just talked about, they're streaming below me right now, but I will see you very soon. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking, mad love, and happy Thanksgiving.